Hello, beloved. It's me, Robin. Robin Hallett, intuitive healer and light sparkler at robinhallett.com. And this is Tea with Robin. On today's episode, this is still a time of possibility. No matter what is happening in the world, at home, or in your heart, this is still a time of possibility on making choices and changes that set us free. Our inspiration today, redefinition. Go ahead and let yourself redefine this time for you. And we'll have a letter on choosing a perspective and an intention for this new year. So much goodness here. Come grab a cup of yum yum and meet me here. Well, hello, beautiful friend. It's me, Robin. Welcome back to the podcast, Tea with Robin. This is episode 121. One, two, one. If it's your first time here, ooh, one, two, one. Wait a minute. I wonder if that means we're going to have a really great one to one podcast, too. From heart to heart, soul to soul. Let's, let's see. I'm feeling that way. If it's your first time here, hi, I'm Robin. This is a podcast about choosing to remember the light you truly are. I hope you love it here. And please say hello and my thanks to whoever shared this with you. Thank you. Friends returning, how are you today? How is the weather in your heart? I hope that you have been allowing lots of time for you, lots of spacious presence for letting yourself breathe through this time now. Yeah, really, really important. Over here, it's a gorgeous day. I'm recording on a Friday and I've just come back from the most amazing walk. So inspired. I listened to the entire Purple Rain album from Prince and It took me back in so many good ways to memories of that time um, growing up when the album was coming out, when the movie was out, and just enjoying the sunshine, um, thinking of my beautiful friends who inspire me, and choosing a place of alignment that even now there is a lot of possibility. There's only possibility even now. And that's the exciting message of today, I want—I can't wait to talk to you about this. So you know what comes next, don't you? Did you bring a cup of yum yum? I've got a cup of yum yum over here. I made the whole thermos today. I better fill some up. What do you think we should be cheersing to today? What is it that you would like to celebrate about yourself or your journey today? I know... I'm in touch with many of you through the week, and there are so many things you are rocking out. You know, part of it is you're making, you're making these choices to support yourself and doing things that are very brave and courageous. And that's, you know, I hope you'll think of something you did this week that you feel especially proud of. And I raise my cuppa to you. I raise the same to me. Bless us and thank you. I'm so glad it's us and we are here. Cheers. Mm. I am sipping a cup of stash tea today. Or Well, I made a whole thermos, so Earl Grey, my favorite. Always come back to the Earl Grey and a little stevia and just a touch of sea salt, which gives it such a it's like a little I don't even know how to explain it it's almost a little caramely somehow Ooh, so good so friends you know today I want to talk about possibility choosing the perspective that this time can still be good there's so much happening in the world and you know the list keeps growing um We need to be careful. We need to practice discernment and 
and be choosy with what we give our awareness to right now because there is a lot happening. And on top of that, there's a lot of I'm noticing, and this is just in the conversations I have, the healing sessions and the messages I get, there's a lot of shoulding going on. You are shoulding on yourself in terms of I should be doing this and I should be doing that and I should, you know, so I just thought we could come together and talk a little bit about how you keep this possibility alive in your heart and you continue to choose trusting that you are of service to the world when you are aligned in your heart. So, um, you know, yeah, the capital news, I've been noticing that in the U.S., the capital, you know, there's been so many things all around the world happening. So please tune to the big news item in your your area right now. Um, it feels a little bit to me like there is an intention to drum up the drama. Um, when I come into Instagram, all of the news feeds continue to report and it's important to report, so I'm not saying that, but continue to report, it almost feels to me in ways to continue to dose out the drama, to, to continue the fear energy and continue the um, negativity, you know, like it's a heavy time, it's a bad time, it's a horrible time. And Last week, I said to you, if we can't watch the news, then who? I don't know. We need to be able to be in this place of we as those of us awake, practicing awareness. Um, it's okay to know what's going on. And it's okay to tune in. So you, you're abreast. It's better to be in a neutral space with the news than to be in a space of pushing against because you're afraid of being jinxed or harmed or damaged by what you take in. Do you know what I'm saying? A few of you wrote to me about that this week, about the what I said about um, being able to watch the news. You're always free to make that choice to watch or not watch. You know, what I'm saying is it's good to practice not being in such a swing state with your your fear and your anxiety about it. Does that make sense? Um, so, you know, I just see how much negativity is out there in terms of pushing a perspective or reinforcing a perspective, that energy of it's a it's a very, very difficult time, scary, heavy time. But the thing is, we're here. We are here. And we are in service of so much goodness, so much light. When we choose to not fall apart, when we choose to not spread further fear and anxiety and, you know, doubt, heavy and information, um, we're of service in the world. So I have complete faith because we're here and our, our energy is the most powerful thing. Yeah, so um, it's an interesting thing. I don't know if you've noticed that in the news. Like when COVID first came out, that was really what dominated. And it was important to know what was going on. And we were glued. We had to know, you know. But then you come to a place where you settle in a little bit more with yourself. And you adapt and you continue to see this as an opportunity and well at times it, what I see in the news it's like let's talk about inciting violence in the capital and continue to pound that story because we adapt and that fearful energy is still trying to stay alive too the ego collective unconscious ego in the world too right so there's a part that's always trying to assert the struggle, the fear, the upset. And we can continue to remember that our practice is to choose how we want this experience to be for us. Yeah, I want us to remember this is a time of possibility. So important right now to know what you're about, to really be focused there. And sometimes... 
I ask friends whether they're talking about world events or concerned with their own lives and what's going on. The question eventually comes around, what are you getting out of being upset? Being in a state of upset, in a state of dis-ease, you know, rupture, chaos, um, disorganized nervous system. Is there a benefit to any part of you that you can think of? You know, when I take a step back, when I ask myself that, because it's a tender question, a lot of times it doesn't feel like we have a choice, sometimes, you know, when you're upset. But there are those moments where you're, you're able to pull back, pull out a little bit and look at this issue and say, you know, yeah, I can see how this energy serves a story I believe in, or this energy of upset helps me feel like I'm doing something. A lot of us creatives, sometimes we fall into these heavy, heavy vibes and we believe that induces a great state of creative, creative flow. And while certainly I have found that to be the case, if we're not careful, we make this groove where that's automatically what begins to happen, like on autopilot, unconsciously, this chaos and this drama. So, you know, if you're having any kind of this sort of, I don't know, let's call it chaos fatigue. I kind of like that idea, chaos fatigue. You're experiencing chaos fatigue in your world anywhere. Um, what's happening here? Just ask yourself, what's happening here? What am I doing? What am I doing here? What am I getting out of this? Take a look at the cause and effect for yourself. I believe so strongly that even in our most strongest, upset, fearful, anxious, down, depressed moments. And believe me, I'm right there too. There is a stronger part of me who really wants to be free. You know, there's a part of me that wants even more than I'm afraid to be through this, to be able to bear it, to be able to keep going. You know what I'm saying? Isn't that so true? <gasps> Ooh, it's wild. Just when I said that, I, you heard me catch my breath. The sun just shone into my office here and lit up the corner of the wall and it's all sparkling through the crystals. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah, there's a part of us, even though, you know, all this stuff is true, feels so real, you know. There's a bigger part that wants to be free. That's the big takeaway. It's not that you have struggles. It's not that you're afraid to watch the news. It's not if you have, you know what I'm saying? Don't judge how you feel. You just are, period. If you want it to shift, if you want, if you acknowledge you want to be free more than you want to be afraid, this is very much the case that we must align with what possibilities are here now? What do I want? How do I want this to be? That's what we're going to do. That's what we can do. We're allowed to do that. This is our invitation to do that. So my question is, how do you really want to roll in this time? I love this knowing that there is still, even now, you know, even now, there is still so much possibility. I love it so much when we make the personal choice to see it that way, that we're willing to see it that way, that we're willing to advance our journey that way by making a choice. So even though, you know, um, even though all these things are going on, I choose ease, peace, peace, um, possibility. I choose, let my heart stay open to the possibility of this now. You know, it's really okay to want to be okay, want to be feeling, um, a state of, in a state of freedom, despite the evidence of all that's happening right now.
Where I begin with that is it's okay. Let's say you're having a tough day. I talk about this a lot. I think last week I talked about this, even though it's scary, even though you feel um, unclear. A lot of you are wondering what your purpose is now. Um, Even though I'm feeling unclear, even though I'm feeling afraid, I love and appreciate myself. It's okay if it's not okay. Like first acknowledge what is for you in this moment because you're intending to leave. You're intending to move beyond. And just like the news, you can't be so afraid of being jinxed by your upset that you keep ignoring it and pretending it's not here. It is here. But there is also a thing of acknowledging it and not making it your everything. We get into deep places of disturbance, of distress, because we make it our everything. We continue to see it like it's the reality. It's all there is. But here we are. Here you are. And here I are. (laughs) And we're knowing that it's not all there is. We are knowing through our practice, through the journey, that there's something more. And here we are still reaching for a certain kind of freedom we know is possible. So this means we need to create, to visualize, to allow ourselves to name the possibilities we would like. Without that, it's just so easy to be in the news feeds, listening to the fear mongering and giving our energy over to that and becoming smaller and smaller and smaller in terms of what we feel is possible in this time now. Does that make sense? So let's do a little practice together. Let's imagine if I say to you right now, visualize a green apple green apple, you know, slowly and slowly, that picture comes more and more into view. Green apple, green apple, green apple. (laughs) It's the same thing as you ponder your life and your possibilities. Pick a direction, pick a green apple, pick a word, pick a feeling. Back when we were doing morning magic, we would say, what is your word for the day today? How do you want to feel today? So say you say free or untethered or clear or hopeful, that's your green apple. Just spend some time focusing there. Spend some time allowing yourself to visualize. Give yourself space to explore and see what you need. This is how you keep possibility going in a time such as this. Whether I'm talking about world events or personal events or family events or all of the above, this is how you do it. You have a perspective, a philosophy, a possibility, a green apple you're orienting yourself toward. Towards or toward? I don't know. I'm not looking it up. Okay. (laughs) Oh my God. This is me doing my green apple in action. I want it to be easy. And you know what? It can be, but I have to make that choice and then follow what I need out. And what I need is not having to look up which way it is that supports my insecurity. Like somehow I'm not good enough. I'm giving into a negative mental chatter about stuff, just like you do. You give in to your negative mental chatter and it takes you off your, you know, out of your center, out of your core. So much of the jibber jabber in our heads is judging every thought, every move, every decision. Try not to listen to the negative jibber jabber like it's the truth. Try not to do that. Know that that's a thing that happens for you and instead give yourself what you need beyond that jibber jabber or back to my example of watching the news beyond that stuff lies what you truly are interested in the realm of your possibility so you have to go beyond that when it starts to come I hope this is making sense today 
I tell myself sometimes I can ignore the mental chatter. And the more I practice that, the clearer I become. It's mental chatter that keeps telling you you haven't read enough of the news, you don't know enough of what's going on, or even that you don't clean your house good enough, you should be doing more, you should be doing more, you should be doing more. That's just mental chatter. You can learn to ignore it once you make this choice that it's still possible to have a good day. I want to have a good day, you know. So how do you really want to roll? That's the really good question to be asking because I know a lot of us feel like we are at the mercy of some kind of invisible force. But really, our experience is much more cause and effect than we realize the where we pl- the <laughs> the where we play a <laughs> the where we place our focus is up to us and the interpretation we choose is up to us and the way it makes us feel is up to us and i am not saying that to make any of us feel like we're not okay if we have depression or anxiety not at all i'm talking about us making our way. This is the perspective we choose. We can slow down and receive support from our own higher self, from our own knowing. How do you really want to roll in this time? That is the question before us. It's interesting. I was telling you last week that I was um, taking a lot more alone time for me and pursuing some things that are fun, that I have a fun time and they make me feel lit up and feeling so excited, you know, all of that. Choosing this beautiful possibility for myself, for me right now. And I'm learning a little more about tarot and I've been slowly going through this spread I created for myself totally by accident um, (laughs) on New Year's Day. Number one husband and I, we have this our favorite coffee maker it sprung a spring somewhere and (laughs) the entire house was filled with the aroma of coffee but then when we got in the kitchen the coffee had covered the entire counter the floor the kitchen nook where I like to sit and one of my favorite tarot decks I love the art called Gypsy Zigeuner it's a German or French But the art is really amazing. So anywho, eight cards in the deck were completely saturated with coffee. I thought, I'm going to do a New Year's spread for me. So I laid these cards out face down in between a couple towels and pressed them to dry for a few days. And then I took them upstairs here to my little spot where I'm talking to you now. I've got a corner in the office where I can sit and meditate and receive guidance before sessions for clients, friends on the journey. And so I've been slowly doing this reading. And my future card, card of the future, was the King of Cups. The message for me about the King of Cups is that you are this calm and balanced energy, even in turbulent times. Other people's strong feelings, um, this the strong time of this news cycle stuff going on, um, other people's emotions and triggers, you're able to navigate that so that you can continue to create a sense of peace in your own interactions, in your own heart, in your own day, in your own life. And I feel like that's a message for all of us right now that even though things can be spinning out, you know, we can still choose. So we can still make these choices for us. And so just keep asking yourself, what would you love to be feeling? What's the emotion you want to feel now? And what is the vibe you want to be flowing in? And creative flow is a beautiful example. I want to be in my creative flow and I want to feel energized I want to feel awake and I my intention is to be in a state of grace. You know, you will know, but ask yourself what it is. And 
something that for friends who enjoy the teachings of Paul Selig and the guides or A Course in Miracles, is it really necessary for you to go into accord with the upset you're witnessing? Um, people around you are stressed or watching the news or all of the shoulding, you know, you should care about this, you should be more upset about this, you should be doing more to champion the causes. Is it really necessary for you to go into accord, to go into energetic alignment with this upset to be somebody who is doing the good work? That's a big, big question for everyone out there anyone wanting to be of service because if you the minute you join in a vibration and an energy of fear or sorrow or feeling sorry or feeling guilty or feeling sad you go with it if we identify with struggle then increased struggle will seem like success to you (laughs) you know it'll feel like you're doing something right So this is why it's really important to rename your parameters. So rename your possibilities, rename your goals. Yeah. And this, let me just read this from our Course in Miracles passage, chapter 21. I read this to us a lot. The responsibility for sight. I am responsible for what I see. I choose the feelings I experience. And I decide upon the goal I would achieve. And everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. And it is not saying we're stubborn jerkos who don't do it right. And we failed again. This is to me a rallying song. I'm responsible for what I see. So I want to see the good, the possibility, the productive time we're in. I'd love to hear more people acknowledging, had we not gone through these times, change would not be happening as quickly as it is. And, you know, we can mince that down lots of different ways, but that's my perspective. A lot is happening at light speed. And the more we can allow the unknown to be okay, the unknown to be um, something we're open to without naming every single thing as good and bad, we're going to, we're going to be great. We're going to be all right. So may that serve you today. I really hope it does. Cheers. So inspiration today, I find myself a lot these days telling friends in sessions that, you know, we get to redefine this time for us. We get to see our lives anew, especially in this time now when there is so much changing and in a way we're being pushed to adapt, maybe in ways we never would have done it before. You know, good example is slowing down. Sometimes you want to slow down forever and you don't do it until you don't feel well and then you have to rest and even then you resist it. But, um, you know, there are certain things that happen to help us make a change. This time is time of redefinition you get to do it all new the way you want it just the idea of redefining work schedule weekend day off these kinds of ideas how can you allow yourself greater ease and freedom to make shifts that make you feel more aligned and in tune with what's happening in your heart, in your life, in your family, in your world. It might sound so basic, you're tempted to just disregard this part of the episode today. But I tell you what, most of us have a thread running through our entire life. Sometimes I call it the little red thread. 
this energy and pattern about the way we approach things and the way we tell stories about stuff. One of the threads I see often when I'm helping people is we've learned to identify with struggle because struggle seems like you're getting somewhere. If you're struggling, if it's hard, if it's if it's really challenging, then somehow it's more worth it. It's more respectable. Like the success is bigger, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's so bizarre. But I wonder if you relate, if you understand. It's like, if it's hard one, it somehow is more special and more important. We could say one of the patterns is, the more I struggle, the greater my success. <laughs> Wouldn't you rather be successful in terms of being adjusted, acclimated, aligned, um, easy, less flappable in this time, less flustered by what's going on, more able to roll with things, less of a drama queen or king, you know? We make everything into what we are making it into. We're choosing that. I just read you the Course in Miracles quote, we're responsible. So if we're really struggling or really freaked out or really frustrated with our lack of free time, for example, I'm not saying it's all your fault. And like I say, you're a stubborn jerko because you won't change you could go there if you wanted to, but that's not the point of this. The point is, you're free. Would you like to make a change? Would you like to try out? It's possible for me to do my things, whatever your things are, your work, your housework, your, I don't know, let's call them your chores. <laughs> well, a lot of us know what chores were growing up for sure. Wouldn't you rather... Be in a mode of sort of like whistle while you work, happy, at peace, loving your experience, listening to music, enjoying your time, and, and also knowing in your bones, I think this is something too. Let me know if it is for you. Do you ever feel guilty or like you're not doing enough or it's not good enough or it's not important enough? If you don't earn as much money as somebody else in your household or you don't earn a living, you know, because you're <laughs> you're doing the work of supporting your home without pay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you ever have a struggle feeling like you're comparing that somehow it's not as important or valuable? These are places we can redefine what all of it is for us. It's so important, my friend, to, to really take a look at the stories you're telling and why you're doing that to yourself. And again, this whole thing about struggle, meaning you're doing something more important, is ridic, but it's out there. The people who tell you it takes 10,000 hours to get good at something are totally missing the boat that, did I just lose you? I hope I hope this is making sense. Like, you know, you don't things take forever and it's really, really hard. Um, but what if we are doing things for 10,000 hours because we love and adore them and we're learning how it goes? You know, why would we be struggling and complaining about that? This is our life. This is our opportunity. So anything you want to change, anything that doesn't feel like it's not working right now, How's your schedule these days? How are you scheduling your time these days? I know I have spoken to you so much about me producing this podcast. This I have really been working on this, and I bet you can tell if you're listening every week. I bet you can tell because things are a lot smoother for me. And it was very, very easy. I just began deciding I'm going to redefine how this goes. It does not have to be hard. And I'm willing to let some things slide that um, make it extra strenuous. And are, are, it's probably so much better. Anyway, so feels a lot more like a conversation to me on the last 10 episodes for sure. And I love it.
And that's so my style. So I'm learning that through making a choice to redefine how a good episode looks for me, how a good podcast um, functions, you know. And so you can do this everywhere. Look at your schedule. Those of you, you know, the whole family is home and doing your thing. What do you need? What would really help you in the day? You get to redefine this time for you. Redefine your day. Redefine your schedule. Redefine your patterns. Redefine the way you do you and your life. One of my friends checked in and let me know she's taking time alone with headphones on, sleeping in a separate room sometimes. And I love that so much. I have a room that I stay in by myself too redefining what things look like for you. It's okay to honor and take care of yourself. And it's okay to change it. It's okay to change the plan. You might have people in your life who are annoyed by that when you make changes. But you know what? We're helping everybody. This kind of stuff I'm talking about is generational. It's the way we've always done things. (laughs) Well, now it's new. And this is us, and we get to redefine this time. Sing it with me, my friend. Redefine this time. Yes, so good. So remember what I'm saying. You get to redefine it, love. You get to redefine it. How do you want this to be? And let's find out what happens for you. I think that's so beautiful. You know, let's find out what happens for you. Change your schedule. Change your work schedule. Change your morning schedule. Change your routine. Give yourself an afternoon, you know, lunch, nap time. Lunch, then nap for you. Take a nap. Tell your kids it's creative time. That's what I used to tell the kids. One hour in your room and you can do whatever you want. The name of the game is don't open the door, (laughs) something like that, you know, but they remember that as a very lovely time. I think the big thing is have the courage to reassess and reevaluate, redefine. It's almost like magic. It's just intention. So I hope that helps. Um, I hope you give it a whirl. And always, if you see me posting this somewhere, Instagram or Facebook, for example, I love to hear in the comments or YouTube. These all go to YouTube as well. I'd love to hear in the comments what you are doing and what you're finding, or if you're hearing an aha. I love to hear and know from you. Cheers. Mm. So this is the part in the show where I love to ask you to support the podcast. And I thank you so much for your kindness in spirit and your love, um, your support, and share this on how you how it feels natural and right to you if you wanna. A lot of us need this kind of support right now, and I always hope it's the right mix of, you know, not too, too, too heavy and not too out there, but also super down to earth. So help some people find this episode, find this podcast. And I I thank you so much, really and truly. Share it with a friend. Forward, if you get the emails, forward the email on. But also receive it and practice in your life. Receive it and practice in your life. Sometimes people tell me, And I don't want to sound judgy, but I'm just saying you have to practice, you know, listening gets you so far, but then you have to decide and practice. People tell me it's so hard. I can't, you know, I love listening to you, but, you know, it's so hard. Well, that's the choice you're making. And that's the information you're giving your system. You're giving your mind that it's too hard. I can't do it. I'm too, I can't do it. I'm dumb or whatever you say about yourself. It's so unfair. It's too hard. I'm too busy. I can't do it. 
just be aware of your chatter, your mental chatter. And like I was saying before, you know, you can ignore the negative chatter. What's one thing you can put into practice? That too is supporting this work, this love. And I thank you so much. Thank you. So today's letter comes from a friend in the love posse. This goes out to you, Amy. (laughs) Robin, the year is coming to an end and I've been sitting with what I want the new year to be about. What gets to come? What wants to go? And shall I just let be without needing to assess it any further? Usually I feel an excitement about the new year, but as I sit still in the quiet of my heart, what I feel this year is grief. There is much that wants to go. Friends, worries, stories that fill my space, and some belongings and patterns too. They are so very readily asking to be released, and for that I feel sad. I wonder. What I see in my mind is a vacuum, an emptiness that isn't wanting to be filled, and that scares me deeply. So what do you say, dear Robin? to guide me through what feels like a very backward foreign time during a usually celebratory transition into the new year. The warmest of hugs and the biggest of blessings to you and our love posse. Love, Amy. Thank you for your letter. One piece coming up right here is how do I let go of what doesn't serve me? How do I let go of just what I know is irrelevant to me. What's in the highest of high, it's really irrelevant to me. That's really at the heart of it. So many of us have control issues and we're not willing to open up our hands to the universe, like to to the space and just say, take it. I don't want to do it. Thinking of a beautiful, it reminds me of a beautiful poem from Rumi. A community of the spirit. I made some art on this a while back. Open your hands if you want to be held. I think I'll read that to us at the end of this, but that line, open your hands if you want to be held, it's so powerful. So as you're sitting with what you want this new year to be about for you, don't let this be just a decision process in your mind just your intellect. This is a spiritual journey you're on. It requires your whole being. Sit with your own aliveness and ask yourself what gets to come and what wants to go. And maybe the feelings will tell you, I want to be easy in my life. I want to have a state of flow. I want to notice You know, the way my kid's face lights up when we're sitting together and laughing about something, even though it's a busy day and the house is a mess and there's a million things to do. I'm going to learn how to breathe into the spaces. I'm going to learn how to look into her face and smile and receive I'm going to learn, you know, that's what I want. I'm going to learn how to not have to keep up with anything in the conversation, on any topic. I'm just going to be in my awareness and enjoy this time. It's a very different thing. I think I said this to you a few episodes back that sometimes... I have to honor there is a big gap between me and another person in a conversation or connection or even the healing session. We are not in the same place and there's nothing wrong with knowing that. There's everything right with knowing that and honoring how you are and where you are in terms of your journey is learning like you don't have to have every conversation You don't have to hang in with every single friend, with every single person who contacts you or wants to connect. Um, The mom groups you're in, 
you know, all the texting. Sometimes friends talk to me about the WhatsApp groups they're in and like 37 text messages today and I can't keep up and it's so overwhelming and wherever we go, there we are. Remember that saying? John Cabot, uh, John Cabot Zinn, but also I like Confucius said, <laughs> wherever you go, go with all your heart. And I think we do both. It's like you're in those groups or those texts or you're, you know, just think about somebody who's really been a disturbance in your mind lately. You've been, you can't stop thinking about something they said or did. And you feel that part of you sort of can't let it go. Wherever you go, there you are means this is the opportunity for you to practice your own stuff because you're bringing, this is that thing you keep bringing to it. The critical, the controlling, the judging, whatever it is, the annoyance, the irritation. And so we practice every, every upset, every turmoil, every little bit of irritation. We practice welcoming it in. We practice sitting with it and knowing this is me. This is how I dance with stuff. This is how I approach things. This is my familiar response. Does that make sense? So what gets to come and what wants to go Let's release the lower stuff, the lower vibrational stuff that creates so much stress. And let's receive greater ease and joy and effortlessness, you know, fun. What's fun? What feels valuable to you? I was getting in. I told you a little while ago, I have my own little room up here, one of the kids' former rooms. And I've been rearranging and taking great uh, liberties with like traditional design and traditional layouts and traditional, you know, that kind of stuff. Oh my God. I get into my little bed there. The other night, actually, number one and I made dinner and took it up to the, to the bed and sat, laid together in bed and ate. Um, and it was so wonderful. But you know, when I'm by myself and I get in there and I look around <laughs> at this cute, just like so blows my mind, adorable, amazing, so me room. And I feel so happy. Can you hear that I'm smiling while I'm talking? I feel so lit up. I would like to know, vibrationally speaking, why we value like the Pulitzer Prize over this. You know, it's just a fun question to start asking yourself why you value um, the f certain things more. And so you don't allow yourself the simple things. And then the question is, can you learn to enjoy with the same energy? You know, so back to Confucius, wherever you go, go with all your heart. Like, can you bring this joyful energy, this excited, delighted energy into doing laundry, for example? As parents with young kids, this is one example coming to mind right now, the awareness that you are really dedicated to little beings and there's very small amount of time for yourself is a really powerful thing. And a lot of people get this urge, this energy of, I need to think about me too. I need to think about myself. I'm doing all this for everyone else and I must attend to my own heart. So isn't that a beautiful, no matter where we are, whether you have kids or not, you know, I hope this is, you, you can all apply this in the perfect way for you. Um, you know, can I give myself the love even though stuff is going on, even though people need me, you know, rely on me? How can I redefine my time? A friend of mine, and she's doing very well, she's starting to do very well, um, has had COVID. Mom, kiddos, and so all of a sudden, you know, they're on that lockdown in the house routine. She is quarantined on her own 
in the bedroom, sequestered. And the whole house has figured out, had to figure out, how do we do it? And the beautiful thing is they did it. They are doing it. They're making it work. And it's working. And we might not always like um, the way it began, for example, getting COVID, you know. But the gifts that come out of that time are something you just can't ignore. How do we want it to be now? We are forever changed. Then that's true any of any situation we're going through, you know? So keep asking yourself, what do I want? It's natural. You mentioned grief. It's natural to be feeling grief. There's a lot of grief to go around. And a lot of us tend to greet our grief by ignoring it and pushing it away and getting very intellectual on that thing and sort of denying its presence. And, you know, we're free to do that. But a lot of suffering comes from refusing to acknowledge what's right here, what's here, and what's the harm in letting yourself grieve. There's so much to grieve. You know, something else people do instead of grieving is bitch. They complain, they rage, they go on and on and on. I mean, certain people in my life get going on this complaining role about politics lately and um, it's weirdly it's uncharacteristic for them and so I sit in this awareness of curiosity that are they really trying to bring something up and out that's not even about this by getting their energy to a place you know does that make sense so if you know you're grieving Let yourself grieve. Hold on to your heart. You know, you don't have to force anything. That's, that's, I, you know, I always want to be sensitive to saying wrong, but that's the wrong approach. It's another pushy intellectual approach. But um, why can't you hold on to your heart and take a walk and breathe and let the feelings be here? Let the feelings be here. As Tosha Silver um, says in all of her change me prayers, you know, let everything that wants to come, come. Let everything that wants to go, go. Could hold your heart and say that. And you're nailing it when you say things that fill your space, whether it's worries, stories, or friends, um, patterns, habits. Let everything that wants to come, come, and let what wants to go, go. I met somebody again after about 10 years of not working, or eight years, you know, something like that in session. I met them again, and um I was reminded at the astonishing truth that you always have free will. And if you choose to stay in a pattern of thinking and processing and wondering and hoping and waiting, you'll stay there. It's like you can stay frozen in time, so to speak. So, um... I say that to encourage anybody who needs that encouragement. Like you can process till the cows come home. You can think, you can wonder, you can spin the plates, you can wait, or you can decide. I'm moving, I'm walking, we're going, we're going, we're going. Paul Selig and the guides. I'm listening to the book of freedom Um, again as I walk and one of the sections they're talking about in chapter day 14 or day 13 
we're all making our way. We're all making our way up the mountain. Let's take the mountain as a metaphorical, let's take the mountain as an example of the journey. We're making our way along. It does, And some people need that to be the hardest, sheerest incline they've ever experienced. Until they don't, until they see, it doesn't have to be hard. It can be easy. I can let this be. I can learn to be okay here. I can give my heart some attention. Does that make sense? And also, you don't always have to be summiting. You know, that's something I've been saying and writing for years. Like, where are we trying to get to so quickly? It makes me giggle sometimes to think about, I'll have to look up the post and I'll put it in the show notes. Um, this will be robinhallett.com slash 121, 121. I'll have to look up the show notes, but there was a post I wrote years ago, something about <laughs> summiting the mountain. The people who are always summiting, you can see the BS falling out the backside. They're always talking about how they're kicking ass and taking names, you know, and they're always charging. They're always accomplishing. They're always doing and good for you. That's your choice. My truth is that doesn't feel kind. It doesn't feel balanced. A lot of us feel like we're not doing it right when we read stuff or see stuff like that, you know, but everyone gets to decide how this journey is for them. So you get to decide how you do the mountain. And like, I love there's a line that the guides say, some of us choose to pull to the side for a few years and enjoy the flowers, like not even worry about our journey, not even think about where we're going. And how would that be to give yourself to this time? Do things you want to be doing. If you're asking really for my opinion, to how to guide you through what feels like a backward foreign time, look for your aliveness, find your aliveness and don't judge where it comes from. See what you can do, make everything your practice, you know, wherever you go, there you are. If you're doing your sourdough starter and you're getting very stressed out about perfecting that and not having it get ruined. There you are again. You know, I'm making sourdough right now. I'm making bread. Um, if you're trying really hard to be an excellent parent and listen and do all the right things, you know, and do, do all the helping things and do wherever you go, there you are. Tend to your journey right there. See if your aliveness can be here. If you're working on a computer database and you're pounding your head against the keyboard because once again, things aren't working and you're frustrated and you're complaining, you know, wherever you go, go with your whole heart. Start asking, why do I keep doing this? This is familiar, you know. This is a pattern. What do I get out of this? What am I getting out of this? You know, look for your aliveness. Even now, possibility exists. Also, please know your belovedness. You are so loved. And there's nothing we need to do to prove our goodness. That's more of a thing we need to receive. So I hope that helps you, Amy, and anyone else, you know. I love to read your letters. I love to get your letters. I love to know that what we're doing here is helping you. So keep them coming. Message me on Instagram or Facebook, Robin Hallett, or email me hello at robinhallett.com. So let's close out. I want to read you this poem I mentioned, A Community of Spirit by Rumi. Are you ready? There is a community of the spirit. Join it and feel the delight of walking in the noisy street and being the noise. 
Drink all your passion and be a disgrace. Close both eyes to see with the other eye. Open your hands if you want to be held. Consider what you have been doing. Why do you stay with such a mean-spirited and dangerous partner? And friends, I hate to interrupt my poem, but please think about your ego and your suffering, your struggles, okay? Why do you stay with such a mean-spirited and dangerous partner? For the security of having food, admit it. Here is a better arrangement. Give up this life and get a hundred new lives. Sit down in this circle. Quit acting like a wolf and feel the shepherd's love filling you. At night, your beloved wanders. Do not take painkillers. Tonight, no consolations, and do not eat. Close your mouth against food. Taste the lover's mouth in yours. You moan, but she left me. He left me. Twenty more will come. Be empty of worrying. Think of who created thought. Why do you stay in prison? when the door is so wide open. Move outside the tangle of fear thinking. Live in silence. Flow down and down in always widening rings of being. (sighs) And that's from um, his book, The Big Red Book great masterpiece. Wow, friends. You can rewind and listen to this again. Think of your own ego. Think of your own upset, your own struggle, your own suffering, your own resistance, your own fear, your terror, your anxiety, your inability to stop controlling everything as the partner as the security, as the food that he's writing about. Oh, and I hear number one husband coming. Maybe he's coming to say hello. Is that you, lovely? (laughs) Hello, love posse. (laughs) That's so funny. Hi. Hi. I just finished. Oh. I, well, I just read a poem forward to hearing it tomorrow. Yeah. What are you doing? I'm drinking coffee. Why are you talking like... This is my Fraser Crane voice. <gasps> well, you guys, we have been watching Fraser Crane. Uh, Fraser. Not Fraser Crane. <laughs> I'm listening. I'm listening, caller. <laughs> oh, we are. Where are we? Season five? I think so. Oh, my goodness. We just finished the one at the Oregon Zoo um, where they named the crane Fraser Crane in a kooky publicity stunt and everything goes horribly wrong. (laughs) So funny and so fitting for what we were just talking about here. So, well, let's say goodbye. You say you can't come in here and just walk out. You got to say goodbye. So thanks for a lovely show, you guys. And, uh, well, you know, I hope you loved it. I loved it. I'm sure I'll love it. (laughs) And I guess we'll see you next time or in a few minutes. If they're binge listening. If, yeah. In a few minutes. Yes. Aren't we so cute? Don't you just love us? Uh, yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> this was fun. Yeah. Thanks for ending on a high note. Yeah. Lots of love, friends. I'll see you next week or. In a few minutes. Bye-bye. Bye. Love y'all. Oh. I love you too, honey. Mm-hmm. I love you too. <laughs> Life is very short, let's make the very most of it. You are a precious gem and I love you. Do, 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 do. We are here to shine and shine bright. You are a gem and 
and you are a spark of the divine so shine like you know it rock it like you mean it cause you really really mean it and mean it and mean it and mean it and mean it don't let crispy people tell you that you aren't sparkly cause you are cause you are cause you are thank you Thank you. Give me a kiss. <laughs>